what could be considered a cruel turn of fate, a submarine that was used in an expedition to explore the historic wreckage of the RMS Titanic. The same boat that met its tragic end over a century ago has gone missing. The incident has left experts and enthusiasts alike wondering about the fate of the submarine and the crew. As the search for answers intensifies, the disappearance adds a new chapter to the enduring legacy of the ill-fated Titanic. But what do we know about this submarine? Before we start, if you don't want to miss new exciting videos, click the subscribe button now before it disappears. Well, on Friday the 17th of this month, billionaire explorer Hamish Harding decided to inform the whole world, or really just his Instagram followers, that a crew of five people had been assembled to explore the wreck of the famous Titanic. The crew would be taking a submersible called Titan, operated by underwater tourism company Ocean Gate Expeditions. And apparently the voyage had a $250,000 price tag. But they were going to be one of the few people to see the Titanic in person. So that's more than worth the price tag, I guess. The Titanic, which sank more than 100 years ago, has remained a thing of interest, most likely made even more interesting by the movie. So the idea of some explorers going to check things out would always be interesting. However, it's a well-known fact that traveling to the depths of the ocean where the Titanic is buried is a very dangerous expedition. The wreckage lies about 12,500 feet below sea level, and traveling that depth comes with a lot of challenges. That's why there hasn't been a successful attempt since 1985. Worse still, even before the submarine went in, there was a slight problem with the conditions. According to Harding, Newfoundland, which is where the submersible was going to set off from, is experiencing its worst winter in 40 years. The only reason they were taking the dive now was because a weather window had opened, which probably means that this time window is the safest for diving. That already sounds kind of risky, but there were experts on the operation, so they must have considered all the risks and decided it was okay to go. Anyway, the five people on board the submersible are Hamish Harding, who likes to explore and has a couple of Guinness Book of World Records to prove it, Shadaza Daywood and his son Salman Daywood, Paul Henry Nargiole, who is considered a Titanic expert, and Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate, the company running the expedition. The submersible was scheduled to spend three days exploring the Titanic wreck, and it set sail off the coast of Newfoundland at about 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, the 19th of this month. Unfortunately, just about two hours after the start of the voyage, contact was lost with the submersible. It was supposed to check in with the control center every 15 minutes to keep them up to date about their location. But the last time that check-in happened, was 10 a.m. on Sunday, and nobody has been able to contact the vessel since. Well, there was some kind of alarm when the submersible hadn't contacted the control center for a couple of hours, there was still some hope. You see, it's supposed to take the Titan about two hours to get to the wreckage of the Titanic, and the entire voyage should take the vessel about nine hours, at least according to CNN. However, when more than nine hours had passed, and the submersible still hadn't resurfaced, there was some serious panic. The crew on ground immediately reported the issue to the authorities, which is how both the U.S. Coast Guard and the Canadian Coast Guard got involved. And they have coordinated search efforts with the Air National Guard aircraft and the Polar Prince, which is the Titan's mothership. The search has spanned about 7,600 square miles, which, according to the captain of the U.S. Coast Guard, is larger than the entire state of Connecticut. Unfortunately, nothing has turned up. The search is still ongoing, and the search party has searched both the surface of the ocean and beneath the surface. However, the results are still negative, and the search party is literally in a race against time. The Titan is equipped with enough oxygen to last for only 96 hours, which is four days. And considering that the vessel has been lost since Sunday morning, there are very serious worries about the state of those aboard it. There are a number of possible explanations for what could have happened. One possibility is that it malfunctioned and sank, which is a difficult possibility to accept because of the kind of people that worked on it. As we mentioned earlier, 
One of them is considered a Titanic expert, and that's because he has gone on a number of significant explorations of the sunken Titanic. Another member of the crew is the CEO and founder of OceanGate, who has organized a number of Titanic explorations himself. So the team definitely knows what would work and what wouldn't. However, some information has come to light that the Titan may not have met some industry safety standards. A letter that was written as far back as 2018 to Rush mentioned some catastrophic issues with the development of the Titan. There was also talk about OceanGate marketing the Titan as meeting or exceeding the safety designs of the DNV-GL. Meanwhile, there are no plans for the Titan to get assessed by that organization, so there is the possibility that the Titan could have had a technical difficulty. Another possibility is that it was damaged by an underwater hazard, just like the Titanic that it was going to explore. And it's difficult to say which of these possibilities would be worse for those currently on board. It is also possible that the Titan simply got lost in the vastness of the ocean. The submersible is equipped with GPS, but it's possible that the GPS system malfunctioned, not exactly the submersible itself. If the GPS system malfunctioned, the sub could have easily become lost. So what's next? Well, the search for the Titan is still ongoing, and the Coalition Search Party has said it will continue to search for the submersible until it's found or it's clear there's no hope of finding it. At the time of this recording, the only information anybody had on the missing sub was that some banging noises had started to be heard every 30 minutes, and this was on Wednesday. Rescue Sano boys were deployed to check things out, and they heard the reported banging noises. Everyone hopes that these noises are a sign of life on the sub, and the authorities are currently channeling their efforts towards the area where the noises are coming from, hoping that it turns up. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, time is running out. There just isn't enough oxygen in the vessel to last a long time. And if the Titan is not found, the five people on board will be presumed dead. Hopefully it never comes to that. Thanks for watching. We'll update new videos when there's more news available about this disappearance. Like stories about disappearances? Make sure you subscribe.